The United Rugby Championship is really what it says on the tin. The South African Super Rugby teams united with the Italian, Welsh, Irish, Northern Irish and Scottish teams of the Pro 14. As you'd expect, there is a wide variety of venues. And so here are the United Rugby Championship stadiums. We start off in Italy at Stadio Comunale di Monigo. It's probably the most basic stadium in the league, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just consists of two very similar stands and not all that much else. But after a renovation a few years back, it is at least in good condition. Loftus Versfeld Stadium. It's a bit of a step up from the last one. It's been around for nearly 100 years now, and in that time it's hosted some games at the FIFA World Cup, and even some first class cricket. Which is actually not that uncommon for rugby stadiums this old. As for the structure itself, it's pretty unique. Especially the steep multi-tiered stands at each end. Carter Farms Park is a stadium that has to live in the shadow of a much larger, better equipped venue. Despite having its own rich history. But I mean it is literally in its shadow, you can't do much about that. The stands have a good mix of seats and terraces. Behind one end is an unconventional double decker stand with luxury suites up top. And a building containing press boxes at the other end. Galway Sports Grounds. This is home to an active Greyhound racetrack, which is interesting. It doesn't actually affect the spectators too much because it's quite narrow. But I'm not a fan of the way they recycle the underperforming dogs. It's ruined kebabs for me now. There are plans to redevelop the stadium into something more suitable. But for now, it's alright. Rodney Parade. That name puts an interesting image in your mind. Of every notable Rodney in the world walking down the main streets and waving. Anyway, this is one of the oldest rugby venues going round at 145 years old. Nowadays, there's a distinct blend of old and new architectural styles, with the West Stand being an antique and the remaining stands being quite modern. Right next to the home of Scottish Rugby is Edinburgh Rugby Stadium, the home of Edinburgh Rugby. It's a brand new stadium built on a modest budget of around £6 million, and so it isn't exactly state of the art. They've got the soft top roofs and artificial turf. But overall, it's rather nice. It's very much the Cardiff Arms Park of Scotland, minus the history. Scott's Toon Stadium. That name is just begging to be said in a Billy Connolly voice. Scott's Toon Stadium in Glasgow. Too bad I can't do one. There is a track, of course, but at least some spectators get the opportunity to sit right near the action, with the addition of those small stands at each end. It's actually quite a bright and colourful stadium. Lens to play at two stadiums. The bigger and better of the two is Aviva Stadium. One of my favourite stadiums in the world. I think initially they had planned to build the world's largest greenhouse to feed the people of Dublin. But then halfway through construction, they remembered that the rugby teams needed somewhere to play, given that their stadium had just been demolished. And so they just made the best of it. But actually, the main reason for the translucent exterior is to let sunlight into the surrounding homes. It looks great though, as does the all green lopsided interior. Their other home is RDS Arena. And yes, I stand by what I said, Aviva Stadium is better, but this isn't half bad. It's a mix of a modern stand with a cantilever roof, an uncovered stand at each end to enjoy the Irish sun, and this quirky old fashioned stand for all you tetanus fans out there. I actually really like the look of this stadium. Alice Park Stadium. In its long history, this stadium has experienced incredible highs and horrific lows. It was the host of the famous 95 World Cup final that South Africa won, but six years later was the site of a stampede during a soccer match that killed 43 people. Nowadays, you might look at the place and think, uh, it's a little rough around the edges, but a hundred years ago, it was literally a garbage dump. They've definitely improved upon that. Musgrave Park. Munster are actually the only team that don't do scrums. 
They instead call it the Monster Mash. I know what you're thinking. Put a cork in it. This actually opened in the midst of World War II. Ireland, of course, was sort of just chilling. Well, I shouldn't say that. Plenty of Irish soldiers fought the Nazis. Anyway, not relevant. After an upgrade a few years back that gave the Eastern Terrace a roof and replaced the main stands roof with the cantilevered roof, Mosgrave Park is now a fully modernised stadium. They also play at Tommen Park in Limerick, a stadium that's shining and shimmering. With stands built like bridges for fans built like fridges, the ground is a good place to watch rugby. Put a cork in it, I know. It seems that it's a bit of a rugby stadium trait to have terracing surrounding the whole field, whereas in football it's usually just concentrated in one section. Like I mentioned in the Limerick, those stands are built like bridges. Looks cool. Swansea.com Stadium A .com sponsor for a stadium never sounds right, but the club don't have any say on that. The stadium is owned by the local council, which is actually owned by the Queen. Or is it? I swear I remember hearing something about every Swansea belongs to the Queen. Anyway, the ground is also home to Swansea's football team, and it's pretty much in line with most of the medium-sized modern football stadiums in the country. Or was it every swan you see belongs to the Queen? Park is Scarlets. The stadium has a mostly metallic exterior, but I like how there are some splashes of scarlet about the place, which is obviously quite fitting. There's more of it on the inside as well. It's actually not a bowl like the last one, there is clearly an individual stand on each side. West is best. Hmm. I guess that's true because I've never heard anyone say that East Virginia was a better state than West Virginia. Kings Park Stadium. Despite there being a more modern and arguably more impressive stadium right next door, the home of rugby in the city has remained so. That one has a running track, so it's a good thing they've stayed here. And although it's not as extravagant, I love those huge and steep quadruple decker stands along the sidelines. Very imposing. Cape Town Stadium. The venue was built primarily for the 2010 World Cup, but it had rugby in mind as well. Unlike in Durban, the traditional rugby ground, Newlands, is set to be demolished, and therefore this will become the home of rugby in the city. It's a stunning venue with a slither of a stunning backdrop. They can afford such a nice stadium in Cape Town because it's actually where Batman does his clothes shopping. Ravenhill Stadium. This is a ground that's going on 100 years old. And would you believe me if I told you that it looked exactly the same when it opened in 1923 as it does today? Well, you shouldn't. That's not really possible. It's been extensively renovated since then and it looks fantastic. Very modern, but in keeping with the wants of the spectators, there is some terracing on every side. Stadio Soggio Lanfranchi. We end where we started, in Italy, at a very distinctive stadium. Credit to the architect that designed this place. They've really tried to do something a little different with the roofs here, and they've succeeded. This stand has some tree branches for a roof, which is kinda cool. They're not very effective in the rain though. They definitely don't leaf you high and dry. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.